All right, we're back for another episode of Them's Fighting Words here on the Izzo Wing Chun channel. Appreciate you guys. Appreciate you guys came and talked today. Appreciate you guys for joining. Uh, this is the martial arts series, right? Everything martial arts, combatives, fun stuff. If you don't know my background, I'm a uh, Wing Chun uh, lover, practitioner. Uh, I'm not going to call myself a master. I've been doing it since 1996. Former wrestler, still wrestling coach, all this stuff. Warm law enforcement. I was a cop. Uh, and I love talking about everything combatives. Um, and I have on great guests who join me. We have conversations. And I like to take the conversations all over the place, not just your typical martial arts of, you know, uh, boring shit. I love to have fun conversations. Uh, today, my guest, well, I found her on a forum uh, that I'm involved in, a Wing Chun forum. And if anybody knows anybody think about forums, they're just a, they're a fucking joke. And we'll kind of get into that a little bit. But uh, my guest today is a uh, martial arts expert in Wing Chun, my art, um, an actor, a, a producer for film, uh, a writer, so many hats that this person wears. And she happens to be a woman, which is rare in the Wing Chun community. Uh, martial artist and actor uh, Lydia Zagorski uh, joins me today. Thank you. I appreciate this was very last minute. You know, we contacted and said, hey, I'd love to support you. But you want to do a podcast? You're like, let's do it. And we just immediately jumped into it. So thank you for being willing. Thank you for having fun. And uh, I appreciate you joining today. Yeah, thanks for having me. <laughs> You're very welcome. Um, what I like to do in the beginning is... I, I like to hear the 360 degree view of who you are. Who is Lydia Zagorski, the martial artist and actor? Uh, tell us, give us, give us your breakdown of who you are, and then let's just have a fun conversation today. Okay, yeah, sure. Uh, so I've been practicing Wing Chun since 2009, uh, so about 14 years, and I'm. I'm an actor, and I started um, I started doing my own stunts and film as an actor five years ago, and I started writing about four or five years ago, just about when COVID happened. And so I completed the Wing Chun system about five, six years ago, and since then I've been doing all my, my own stunt work and films and acting and just going for it. We're going to break it down from the beginning. Why Wing Chun? First of all, if you started, how old are you, if you don't mind my asking? Uh, I actually I actually won't list that just okay. because certain directors what? prefer that I keep it. All right, private, so you look you, you look mature but young. A lot. So here's, <laughs> when I, I used to teach women self-defense, this is why I'm asking. Women yeah. really don't do martial arts, right? There are a lot. There are a couple different women that I've talked to and had on the channel for some great podcasts. I have another one scheduled to uh, Kung Fu Kendra, who is in the, in the group as well, too. Um, women love to do the, the half-ass thing, right? Go to a kickboxing class. They take a women's self-defense class once. They think they know how to fight. You got involved with Wing Chun a at times a frustrating martial art. I tell people all the time that I think it's in my personal opinion, Wing Chun is like the graduate school of martial arts. You, There's so many nuances, so many things you have to pay attention to, so many things you learn about yourself. We do Selim Dao, which has 108 movements, and those movements in the beginning of your Wing Chun journey, they're not going to mean the same thing in the five-year or the 20 year, they're going to keep evolving. Why did you choose this martial art out of all of them? Um, especially when it's dominated by men, which most martial arts are, why didn't you go to something more, I don't know, uh, seemingly more popular, like a, a BJJ or an MMA? Why did you choose specifically Wing Chun? Yeah. So, um, I, I actually think all martial arts, are incredible and anyone who is a martial artist have so much love and respect for just people working to improve themselves and anything. I chose Wing Chun because I am not a very big person. I'm, I'm actually quite small in, in my form, uh, ectomorphic body type. And I was told that it was created by a woman for women and 
you didn't have to be a big strong man in order to protect yourself, that it uses more structure in the legs. Women are actually physically stronger through our legs. And so, you know, the whole basis of Wing Chun is from the ground up. If you don't have a good structure, then nothing is good. So I was told that I would be able to do it at my height and my small size. And I, I just completely immersed myself into it. What was one of your favorite things in the beginning that you found about the martial art that uh, you loved? Um, well, aside from what I just mentioned, being able to be a small woman and be able to practice the martial arts, that is really one of my favorite things. I think that the the techniques and getting the techniques down and the precise movements, I really love that. I'm, I'm extremely detail-oriented, which which is actually how I've been able to wear so many hats in, in creating my um, production company and, and upcoming in my career as an actor. I, I, I love the finer details because that's where I find the, the most success comes from, the finer details, the small tweaks, the small adjustments. Well, so I want to go there for a second. So that means you've got an analytical brain. Wing Chun frustrated me, and I'll never forget it was year three where I was in class, and I could not, I don't know, I can't explain this, I could not do a simple Tan Da block, right? It was beginning of class, mm-hmm. we're doing reflex drills, you know, doing warm-ups, and my Tan Sao is just not appearing, and I can't, I've been doing this for three years. I got so frustrated I'm like, I, I, I just want to quit this. And there was three instances throughout the last 26, 27 years of me doing this where I'm like, I'm done with this. I'm, it's so frustrating because yeah. it, no matter how much we we focus or, or tweak a body position or an alignment, mm. there's the what I call invisible Wing Chun, right? Like you could get all the, the mechanics down properly. But there's some internal things you just can't teach somebody. With somebody who has a very analytical mind like you do, did you ever go through the process of falling in love with the body mechanics of it, but then the internal side of the art conflicted with you? Or did you find just as much passion for discovery the, wow, I can't describe this, but I can feel it, I can deliver it. Uh, it's the, Those are the things in, that the Wing Chun community knows why our art is so different, and I'm sure it applies in other arts, but I'm very selfish when it comes to ours. Did you ever have that those <laughs> those polarizing um, issues of here's body mechanics, here's structure, here's what the visual sees, but, man, this is what I felt and this is what I experienced. Did that ever happen to you? So, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And um, before I dive into this, Did you know, and you you probably know, so um, men and women, physically, our our arm structure is different, and specifically with the Tan Sao, so let me see if I could. Our humorous, like, aren't your, your uh, humorous is longer than ours, right? So women's actually, in our arms, if I can, the bone, so, okay, I'm going to. The bone, if I'm holding it straight out, do you see how it comes here and then it actually turns at an angle? Yes. Do you see how this line? Well, men men's arms don't typically form that way. And so in doing the tonsil in the center line, it's significantly easier. So that would be frustrating. And that was such a good... Uh, example of like something that had frustrated you. I know a lot of my brothers coming up, they were, they had dealt with a lot of frustration in that. Um, now, now moving forward, diving into um, your question about uh, dealing with like the, the more so like the philosophical side and combining it with the physical side. I think a huge part of that for me came with each step in my training and progression and understanding it. Because I I'm an artist and I mean I'm I went to school for fine arts and I'm a martial artist and I'm an actor and I'm I'm an extremely 
saying this in the best way possible, like emotionally in tune person. And so the philosophy side of it, I just wanted to understand it as much as the physical side, but also in progressing the physical side, everyone was bigger than me. I mean, almost Mm -hmm. everyone I meet is bigger than me. And so I feel like I had to train and I did train very, very, very hard to get to a place where I wasn't just getting pummeled. Um, I don't know if that answered your question. It did. And it brought up another thing that I really never paid attention to before. I know there's anatomical differences between men and women, like your humerus, you know, the distance between your elbow and, and uh, shoulder is in ratio longer than mine is. Men have shorter humeruses than women do, which is going to be a different leverage point. And I, I've taught women over the years, but I never thought, how do you teach wom- women as a woman? Like, I never thought about that because I've not in, like, your center. I think your center of gravity is higher than a man's. Ours, like our Don Tien, is supposedly like three or four inches below our navel. And when we're doing the 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 Selim Dow form, that's where we're rooting it. Yours is higher, I believe, as a, as a female. So all of these little physical differences, uh, they, they create for men a problem for conveying the information, I, I would assume, for women. I haven't taught a lot of women. I think I maybe I've taught five women self-defense classes. Oh, wow. But not a lot wow. of women, not a lot of women wanted to dedicate their time into learning. I'm talking, you spend three, four weeks just perfecting a center line punch before you're getting the next thing. Um, I kind of want to talk about that again too. Uh, it has nothing to do yeah. with gender, but it has something to do with students. How did you discover that you were somebody who liked, all right, I got to work, Sifu's going to have me train the, the Tanda for three months. And you're like, you're not going to get any any progression until you perfect something. I don't know if that's how your school was taught, but typically we don't like to advance people onto something else until they really have a handle on things. And as Americans, that's not our style. We want to learn everything now. How did you, did you cope with coming into an art that was you really have to study and your expectations are going to be X, Y, and Z? Uh, Was that something that just came naturally to you or did you have to work on that? Um, I feel like it, it was different at different parts of my training. Um, the progression was slow for everyone, um, that I had trained with, but I feel like with me, I had expectations for myself and I'm, I'm extremely, um, determined and uh very hard on myself and if if I don't like I knew that in training this art I knew that if I didn't get better if I didn't learn how to do the proper movements and position my structure and my horse properly and my feet and my arms I knew that I would just continue to get pummeled Mm. (laughs) and bruised up and I, I, I just, it, I needed it. It was something I had to do. I, I absolutely needed it. And no matter how long it was going to take me, I was going to get it. What was your exposure to it? Cause you said you started in 2015, right? No, I started in 2009. Oh, I'm sorry. 2009. That's still relatively yeah. new. Did you, were there movies? Did you, did, what inspired you to take up this art? Um, Well, I found a school and I was told that I could be little and a woman and be able to protect myself because I had tried to do, um, it was like Hang Su Do Mm -hmm. when I was like a little kid and I, I was a little, little kid and I did it for like a month, nothing, nothing to the point where. I was able to grasp any sort of understanding. But at that point in my life, I was told that if I did this, I would be able to protect myself. And, and so I, I started it. 
I, it wasn't like I knew, I didn't know anything about Wing Chun. That's really, I was told it was created by a woman for women. It doesn't matter how big or small you are. If you learn this, you'll be able to protect yourself. And that's what I needed. I want to talk about, cause you're, let's talk about movies for a second. Uh, were you always yeah. involved with film or was this post uh, fo- being a martial artist? So you, you complete Wing Chun system, you know the Wing Chun system. Did you get into movies after that or were you involved in movies before this happened? Um, during. So I, I'm theater trained. When I was in um, junior high and high school, I participated in theater and musicals. And then I went to college for fine arts. And then, like, I had always wanted to do film. And during this time, like, I, I knew that I needed, for me, I wanted to get the entire Wing Chun system. And I didn't want to move away to pursue acting quite yet. But then the entire, like, like, so, okay. I got the whole system and then I made a decision that I was going to go for it and pursue acting and film because I always wanted to. And I finally got like mustered up the courage and the confidence too, because there was a point where I had a very little self, um, believe just I didn't really believe in myself and I didn't think I could do it and you know it's just where I was in life and then so five years ago I I pursued film acting because it's what I really wanted and I've had a significant amount of training and I I just continue to progress um so martial arts was something that I had done for a long time before I really dove into film. So when I started diving into film, I had the whole Wing Chun system at yeah. that point. Now that's not like I'm constantly improving and getting better. You know, it's an art. You can always grow and learn more. And so I continue that, but I started doing my own stunts and films and writing and just creating my own content and stories and working with other great filmmakers. So that's how I really moved into the, the film world. Tell me the tell me the difference or the thought process or your experience in the difference between movie Wing Chun and real Wing Chun. Because when when I, I'll never forget when movies like uh, Sherlock Holmes came out and you see the trailer, you see Robert Downey Jr. do a centerline punch, like, oh my God. And then you find out he's been doing Wing Chun. He trains under Eric Orem with, and I, I, I'm, I, this is my opinion, I'm not a fan of the lineage he comes from, but he still was a representative for Wing Chun. It's like, this is going to be great. So you see this, and then the, the Ip Man series comes out with Donnie Yen. And a lot of us thought that it was going to make a great impact for Wing Chun. It was going to put Wing Chun on the map and everyone's going to be like X, Y, and Z. And what it did was it created a further, in my opinion, it created a further problem for the, well, Wing Chun doesn't work. It's only good for the movies. Because those of us who know the art know that if you see Wing Chun, it's not good. Wing Chun should be not seen, meaning there's a Tan Sao you do in training, and then there's a Tan Sao that comes out of nowhere when you apply it, and it could look sloppy, but it gets the job done. Did you have to, or did you struggle with the reality of Wing Chun and how it is applied in a real uh, combative circumstance versus the visual perfection you needed to be put it in stunts? And did it did it did it make you rethink your skill, or did it make you? Uh, sharpen it up even more. How were the two uh, melded together, the movie Wing Chun and the real Wing Chun? Um, Beautiful question. So film fighting is so much different than actual martial arts. So obviously you want to bring real martial artists into films if there's going to be fight scenes because there's a different kind of energy that when we release like punches or we release kicks and the body awareness that comes with a martial artist in film, everything is over exaggerated. The movements in order to pick up on the camera better for the cinematographer, 
they have to be bigger and more bold. It looks much more flashy on camera. It translates much more powerfully visually to film. So Wing Chun, when we shot, so this, the short film that I did called Air Mist, when we shot that, there we had we had such a short time to shoot it and such a limited budget and rehearsals so with Wing Chun and seeing it in other films Wing Chun itself is small and condensed movements like the punch like the the, the one inch punch you're mm. not people really shouldn't be flying 10 feet backwards when someone punches that energy the release of the energy into someone's body. It's meant to shock the organs. So someone might buckle forward, but if you release the energy, right. But if you, if you know, everyone in their progression and learning, if, if it's not quite the full release of the punch, then less of the impact is going to be absorbed into the body and the person is more likely to take it from the surface and be pushed backwards further as opposed to that in the body, in the organs. So Wing Chun in film, I think it's so beautiful because it's like it's an art and it's like working with like the fight choreographer and the um, the stunt choreographer and the, the director of photography. Like it's a very unified team effort because in order to translate like like an absorbing tonsil on a film like you got to shoot that at a certain angle and you have to like choreograph your other stunt person that's working with you if you're the fighter you they have to choreograph it in your body like everything is so much bigger so like if i get punched in real life i might like you know go back like this but in film you like over exaggerated so much bigger and i think it's just beautiful it's so beautiful so wing chun in itself you know it's not a flashy art but it's so beautiful and i think the 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 um the devil is in the details and the subtlety in wing chun and that's why like i think it's so beautiful because something can be done and we're like, like someone can be watching someone training Wing Chun and someone could get punched or the po pie and, and they're like, well, what just happened? And then they're out of breath and they're adrenaline jacked and then you got to hit them on their back to help neutralize like a heartbeat and breathe deeper and get that relaxing. Cause I mean, so many times in my training, I like it's happened to me and I've done it to other people and it's like what just happened like it didn't look like anything but when you take Wing Chun and you translate it into film which is something that I'm working on right now it it will be over exaggerated and it's beautiful and another like for for an example I just did this blade um with my double blades I did a a reel for my Instagram and there was a point where I held the blades like, like this. Those are gorgeous knives. Oh my God. Thank you. So I held them like this instead of like this mm -hmm. or this because the way, like I had to adjust and tweak the movement because the way the light hit off the blades i had multiple lighting set up for this short like like choreographed shot for this reel and there are multiple lighting set up and my dp was like listen in order to get the light to hit there was a, a red light and a blue light you have to move the blades and it's like okay great that's awesome but it may not look correct as far as you know the actual form itself but we're tweaking it to make it look good on camera and as martial artists we're all online and we're all looking at other martial artists they're like oh that's great that looks like it could use a little work that's great but knowing that i'm a martial artist as well as an actor and and stunt choreographer and it's just just knowing these details in film 
can make something look that much better and pick up that much better on camera. So that's the, you're, that's the long. You're so accepting of that criticism. And that's why I, I have been defending many people on the forums for a long time. I've been part of the Swing Chun community for a long time. And I like to think that my word has some kind of weight because of the years I've been doing it. And I'm so tired of our art being so vicious to one another. And I see your content up there. And I see this, that we have so many armchair quarterbacks, but you seem to take it great. It's like you don't care. You're confident in your ability. You don't care what somebody says, but that, but it's you and a few others that I'm like, nah, I, I'm not a fan of this crap where people just arbitrarily attack people and then don't put their skill set up. Has, has choreographing fight scenes caused you to look just like just like what you just you described with the knives having to hit uh, uh lighting differently when you were in that position did you did your body get new information where you said huh this is not how the air the, the cool air quotes form is done but i feel this could be x y and z meaning did you ever do anything in a in a choreographed um scene that made you reevaluate your wing chun to approve it for your needs um, yes, I am in, in film. So there is a film that I co-produced and, uh, co-wrote and shot. I'm the director of Franklin Carpio and the film's called EO6. I don't know if you had a chance to see it. It screened in Times Square in New York City this past November, oh, which wow. was amazing. Wow. We shot, we shot, it's a 10 minute short film. And we shot a fight scene. It took us 10 hours. So I was fighting, doing my own stunts and break balls and rolls for 10 hours to shoot this scene. And there are so many things that there are a couple small moves in there that were Wing Chun. And if you know Wing Chun, you'll see them. But then we, we, made the decision to go with much bigger movements and like hooks and um like round kicks and and uh for the purpose of it picking up on camera more powerfully so doing my own fight choreography and stunts and like on that particular film we got to work with um a martial artist and wrestler shane code code Janowski, I'm sorry if I said your last name wrong, but he was absolutely exceptional. He helped with the stunts. He helped huge with the choreography. And Franklin, the director, helped with the choreography. Franklin actually trained Wing Chun. And so it was like we had, like, wrestling. Um, we had a gentleman come in who did. He's a black belt master in Taekwondo. We had um, Wing Chun. And it was just like bringing all these martial arts together to create this fight scene. And I am constantly finding that I'm learning just, it's never ending. It's a never ending process of learning more and more and more about Wing Chun and about other styles of martial arts. I just, it's just so empowering and moving. Do yeah. you think, do you think Wing Chun is complete? I'm very, uh, uh, dead set. I am not open-minded and I'm very admitted to this. I was blessed became because I came from a grappling background. I wrestled first, yeah. came into Wing yeah. Chun and I said, Wing Chun is all the answers for fighting in my opinion. And people went, well, you just mix your wrestling in from grappling or Wing Chun. And I say all the time, no, if you really look because I had that exposure before I can see where grappling lives in the Wing Chun space. Um, yeah. Do you think that Wing Chun is complete or does somebody like you need a long range game? They need a ground game. Uh, you, you're very passionate about Wing Chun. Is this a, a, a system in totality for you? I think Wing Chun is complete. Uh, Wing Chun does have long range in the the Guan, the long pool, um, and Wing Chun has very short range in the blades as far as weapons. I will say that I studied uh, jujitsu for a very brief time, and learning what I learned in jujitsu made me so much more aware of 
other things that are present in Wing Chun. And so where I do say, yes, I do believe Wing Chun is complete in itself, I would highly encourage Wing Chun practitioners to go out and study other martial arts because, first off, it's enlightening and it's incredible to see how different martial arts, regardless of what they may be, can all tie in together. It, it's just so powerful and it's beautiful. I, I just have so much love and respect for martial artists. I want to, I want to go a different direction than come back to this. You have um, a Kickstarter and you're producing a film. Talk about this film. And then you've got a trailer uh, that I want to play if that's okay. Cause I, I, I want to talk about that. And I want to find out the journey of this, but talk about this, um, Arrow Miss the Beginning. What is this? And and uh, I, I want to hear all about this so we can kind of plug this. Yeah, so Arrow Miss is, it's a Wing Chun film. It's about a warrior who she's seeking to bring peace into her realm. She teams up with a mage and an assassin, and they're trying to rid their world of these wicked beings that are just spreading and engulfing people's souls with darkness. And it is, so there's Wing Chun in it. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm working to pull another martial artist, but right now I'm, I launched my Kickstarter March 1st. It ends five days from now, March 30th. And I'm just giving it everything I have. I have an entire group of filmmakers in the industry that I'm a part of that are ready to go. I mean, I have an, an incredible VFX artists. I have martial artists. I have just actors, filmmakers of all sorts. And this film is, it's an inspirational film. It's a dark story, but it's very inspirational. And I feel like anyone can take a powerful message from this. It has strong themes of friendship and love and there's betrayal in it. And I, I absolutely, I absolutely feel like it's going to impact so many lives on such a powerful level, not just from being a Wing Chun martial artist, but from being a female filmmaker, from being uh, just the story. I just can't wait to just put we're it gonna, out into the world. We're going to watch uh, the trailer together here on this. Uh, for those who are looking to support, I, I encourage everybody to support. Uh, I'm going to put a link in um, the the description of this for everybody to check it out. You can, or you can go to the website, LydiaLene.com. Uh, and if you scroll down, you can see a Kickstarter. And let's get, we have five days, five days to get this going. Um, Let's take a look at this uh, together. Oh, 
shadow in your soul, Aramis. I've seen it. Now show me the light within. Okay. Holy cow. <laughs> For those who don't know, I want to, it's a four minute video. How long did that take to do to get to do with the lighting and the color grading and the editing and the, and the audio syncing? That's not a small task. How long did that take to put together? So, so I had asked, some at the time they were acquaintances. They're my friends now, um, filmmakers. They're, we're all independent filmmakers. Um, I asked them if they wanted to team up with me to make this short pitch for a feature film that I wanted to create. And the director is Ben Carlucci, the lead director of photography. Um, Adam Pollock in the AC was Joshua Kaylor. And, um, we worked together and created this from fight choreography and the gentleman that you saw, the the antagonist there with the beard, Shane Ko Kojowski, sorry again if I pronounced the name wrong, he helped with the stunt choreography and some of the fight choreography and it took from start to finish about three months of constant work. Wow. That's yeah. amazing. Because I, I told you, I told you in the yeah. conversation, I was an extra on a, on a TV show and a movie, and it was eighteen hours we did for yeah. one one ridiculous scene. So that's incredible. Um, I asked this, but I kind of want to ask it again. I'm watching the fight scenes in that, and I have to think. All right, so if you're training Wing Chun for years to learn the entire system, you're yeah. learning to commit to movements, right? Especially if you're training with men, they're bigger, stronger, faster. You're learning how to use your power and you, you don't hold back. You don't pull your punches, so to speak. When you first started to choreograph, what was the learning curve like? Were you like, Ooh, I can't, uh, I can't put all of my Yuma into my punch here. I have to pull back. Was there a learning curve for you to do that? Was it irritating to, again, I, I know I kind of asked this, but I didn't ask this specifically. Was there a learning curve in the transition from going to uh, not dumb down, but to movify, to movify your Wing Chun? What was that experience like uh, when you first learned it? So I would say um, in movie fighting, uh, everything like I've been so, so fortunate enough to work with other incredible like stunt um, stuntmen and, um, martial artists. And so I would say, I think there was a very small amount of frustration 
Um, because there was this one film I shot and the DP kept saying, the director of photography, he kept saying, you need to make it bigger. Mm. You have to make it bigger. You have to push more into it instead of like just this more subtle, you know? So I guess that was my, probably my biggest learning curve, but it wasn't, it wasn't very difficult because I mean, I, I, I tend to learn very fast and I'm, I am an experienced martial artist and I, I really know my body and, and how to, uh, to move it in ways that like to pick it up better on camera. So I, I learned very fast. So I guess that would, that would be the most frustrating, but it wasn't too bad. It feels uncomfortable. Like when I first, learned Wing Chun, you know, we, we you threw big haymakers, right? And then all of a sudden you spend years perfecting this very straight line that's very subtle, very small, to where if I ever, if my hand ever did a, you know, when you when you have new students come in and you, and you throw that big haymaker so that they could discover it, it feels weird. It feels foreign to deviate off your center line. That's why I have to wonder, when you're doing the movie uh, a fight choreography, how... Like foreign did it feel going back to the exaggeration of movements when you've spent years tightening them all up? It did feel foreign. That that was very foreign. Um, admittedly, yes. Uh, it just in in doing it, I just feel like. When when I'm working with other martial artists and stuntmen and women, it just there's just such a unified cooperative teamwork and it's so just beautiful and powerful. And it's like even if like we do these big movements and it feels so foreign, it's just like we all know that it's it's for the best and it's it's for the camera and it's gonna turn out beautifully. But, but yeah, Wing Chun is, it's so fine, fine tuned. And, and I, I definitely see what you're saying. I want to talk about this because this is my view and I'm not asking you to agree with me at all. If you're, if your experience is complete opposite, you know, and it's like, and it's a very simple answer then perfect. Um, I want to talk about the, the community. Have you seen a difference in uh, the way, or let's do two part. Number one, how does the Wing Chun community treat you? Uh, I don't care about lineage across the board. How do they wind up treating you? And then secondly, do you feel that uh, women there, it seems like to me, seems like to me, the women are, are typically ostracized in the Wing Chun community. Um, and then the third part to that is how do other martial arts from other communities, they treat you? So again, the, the three part question is uh, how, how does the Wing Chun community treat you? Do you feel that you're treated differently as a woman? Um, and how does other arts, how do the the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu guys, the Tang Sudo guys, the Krav Maga guys, how do they teach you or treat you when uh, dealing with them? Okay, great. Uh, so I cannot even begin to express the, the sincere gratitude that I feel towards more of the international Wing Chun community. I never expected when I started coming out of my shell and I releasing um, Wing Chun videos on social media, I never expected the positive um, like outreach that I have received. I am completely blown away by the world Wing Chun community. I feel like it is one of the most incredible things that has ever happened to me. I cannot wait to connect with more incredible Wing Chun practitioners. I cannot wait to connect with so many more people, martial artists of all levels and all different martial art forms. I, I am just completely blown away. I am so incredibly grateful i mean that that's that's the first part to the first question um the second question was 
As a uh, woman, how do they? How, how do you feel received as a woman? I'm blown away by your answer. I'm blown away because oh. in, it's my view. It's my. I'm. I'm the bitter old man, right? I've seen. We eat our own. It's political. We've we've eaten our own. We critique everybody. Nobody has anything positive to say. You know, you're not doing it. It used to be a running gag when I first got on social media. Well, 12 years ago, 13 years ago, it, we used, we almost had T-shirts made up said you're doing it wrong because that's all it would. You yeah. put you put up a, a five minute video that you had you took out of an entire class and oh you're doing it wrong. It's like what are you yeah. talking about? So I I, I no. guess I still look for that stuff. I, I guess if you seek shit, yeah. you're gonna find it. So I I'm right. I'm conditioned for that. I'm glad. I'm very glad you had that experience, and I'm, I'm hoping it continues that way. But as a woman, I want to know, how do you feel now uh, with, the, with the community? Is it still the same? Um, so so in, in, in elaborating a little more, that's not to say that I haven't um, experienced a tremendous amount of negativity. Um, but I feel like the, the truth seekers and the true martial artists, they are always, always more accepting of the truth of people, anyone who practices martial arts, real martial artists are going to go out there and encourage other martial artists. Now, I'm not saying, like, be enablers if someone's, like, pulling out sharp blades and literally, like, slicing their wrists or doing something to really get them hurt. Like, you know, we're going to be like, hey, uh, maybe, maybe try this a little differently. You're doing all right. You know what I mean? But, you know, be careful there. Um, but you know, I think that's everywhere and everything that anyone does and in, in any skill level. So, but, um, as a woman in martial arts, I, I do find that coming up, um, it was difficult. It's certainly, it's certainly, um, difficult. I do think it's difficult for everyone, but difficult from the aspect of, oh, did someone accidentally punch me in my breast and are we going to be mature about it? Or, you know, like mm. is things going to get awkward, or, you know what I mean? Or like, you know, if, if someone hits me, I'm so much smaller. Are they going to like break me? You know what I mean? I think that within the, the community, like my, most of my, um, brothers and sisters uh most of them were significantly uh respectful and um just you know aware and uh obviously we're not trying to kill each other when we spar but just um you know honestly just treating it honestly and I feel like you know being a female martial arts it, there is there's possibilities of it being um, lonely, but I never, I never dealt with that. Um, there were times where I was like, oh my gosh, I, like I had questioned whether I was ever really going to get it early in my training because it was extremely difficult. Like I, I mean, I get busted in the face and come out with like bloody lip and teeth and there was one point, well, many points, but there was one day where I went out and I was in like a spaghetti strap top and I had black and blue and green and purple bruises all over my chest and my arms. And this girl thought that I was like, she thought I was being abused and I had to explain to her that I was a martial artist. So she didn't call the police, which, mm -hmm. you know, good for her if somebody was, you know what I mean? But I, you know, we take a lot of bruises, but I think everyone does. I, I think women are absolutely incredible and exceptional. And some of the best martial artists are women and some, some are men. I mean, it just, it depends on, you know, how bad you want it. But there is obviously a, a big difference between uh, men and women coming up in the martial arts. I'm going to assume that translates over into the other exposure you've had with other arts and other communities. Like nobody's ever tried to come up to you and said, Oh, I know BJJ and you're a Wing Chun, you know, woman. I'm, I can do better than you. Are you still meeting that same cordial, good, like friendly energy? Or have you run into any kind of like 
instances that made you just, you know, uh, just kind of uh, be proud you weren't associated with them? Um, I definitely ran into those instances. Um, there was a point where, I mean, well, I'll, I'll share this story. Uh, I'm not. I'm not entirely proud of it, but I'm proud that I had the training that I did. Um, I had just left a school that I had trained at for a long time, and I w- I, uh, I went to uh, another school, and I challenged one of their students who was a black belt, and they didn't they didn't they didn't understand anything about Wing Chun, and you know we gloved up and. Luckily, I, I, I had trained as hard as I did because I came out on top, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend anyone doing that. I wasn't in a good headspace at that point in my life. And, um, you know, but, but they were, you know, they were being very demeaning and I just wanted to either I was going to get my ass kicked or I was going to prove something to myself. Well, talk so. about that for a second, because that's important. We, as martial artists, we want to think that we're very Zen-like and we're very uh, water off a duck's back and we should be, um, you know, above the circumstance. I think that's important that you went through that. I don't think there's anything wrong with discovering the side of yourself that has that <laughs> piss and vinegar. And, and has that fight. I think far too much. Um, it, it's a very it's a it's it's a very fine line between how we are online because all of us are online. We all talk tough online, right? And um, right. and then there's the whole well, you know, come to my come to my gym and bring a waiver, and that never friggin' happens. It just doesn't happen. Yeah. And then oh, you backed out yeah. of a challenge, but there's that side of us that still does need to get out and be that aggressive animal. And you experience that. I think that's important. What did that teach you about yourself? Because Wing Chun is violent. It's aggressive. It's, oh, it's, it's aggressive. but how, but how can we be, how can we be violent and aggressive if we're all doing the whole, like, uh, oh, you got to have Mo duck and you got to have decorum and you got to be, no, I'm um, sorry. There's sometimes you got to let the fucking animal out. What did you learn from that experience? <laughs> Uh, so I learned multiple things, and and I I would like to reiterate that's not something I would ever recommend anyone doing. I think a lot of people get hurt doing that, um, and I I don't even know why the fuck I did it, but I was in a bad headspace, and I just wanted to see if if I if. I wanted to see if all my years of training meant anything or if it was just a bunch of shit. So um, I think as human beings, every single person has that side that they want to let it out. So I would encourage it more in a controlled environment or, you know, like friendly sparring with peers. Um, Was that your question? (laughs) I want to know what you really learned about from that instance of letting letting the the animal out of the cage. Uh, I... I... (laughs) I learned that there was a whole hell of a lot more to me than what I believed. And I, I, at that point, I learned that I was a lot stronger than I thought emotionally. Um, And I learned that I had a lot of shit to let go of at that point in my life. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of shit. I had taken the blindfold off. And there was a lot of things exposed to me at that point in my life. Wing Chun is, is physical and it's internal. And one of the biggest misconceptions yeah. we have in Wing Chun is that the soft energy, right? And um, there are several Wing Chun people out there, myself included, who believe that when you are in a true fight, the adrenaline takes over and that soft part of you, it's gone. You better learn how to deal with that very hard, aggressive tensed up energy because it exists physiologically. I honestly think that it's internal as well too. You experienced it. Do you, was it something that you hold on to? You went through that experience and now you can Mm -hmm. control 
that hard side of your personality and kind of put it to use when it needs be. Because again, I'm going to go back to uh, one of the reasons that Wing Chun gets its ass kicked in like MMA and fighting is because people think that they just need to have that soft internal energy, and you know I'm gonna I'm gonna absorb your energy, and no, you're gonna get your ass kicked if you don't if you don't have that hard and no, learn how to turn it on when it needs to be. The mentally, it's the same thing. When you went through that, now you have it. Do you have that control that will now? Where yeah, I'm I'm Liddy. I know when to use the movie Wing Chun, and I know when to fucking let the animal out of the cage and use the real Wing Chun. Did that instance give you that foundation for balance? Um, if I'm being honest, I'm not sure because when I, when I was practicing Wing Chun consistently, there, there are two parts, the, there's that soft side and there's that, there's that hard side, but in combining both, that was something that was encouraged. And so that's something that I really I really had to take to heart, but um, I don't know. I think different life experiences have led me to to tame the beast and and to to really know when to let it go. But I think at this point in my life, there's been a lot more taming instead of letting it go because <laughs> I've had more practice. Mm. All right, I want to plug this again. Uh, Aramis, the beginning. Um, you can click the link in the bio here to go ahead and contribute and donate. We have five days. Uh, this is March 25th. This will be released today, so we have until March 30th to do this. You can go support Lydia at LydiaLeanne.com. Check out her resume, her works, her YouTube channel, all that stuff. I think this is fantastic. Uh, this looks like a great production that we're all going to enjoy, and I hope you continue this. Two, I want to... Two endings to this. Number one, uh, what do you see happening now with your Wing Chun career uh, in relation to films, teaching, uh, continuing your martial arts, anything else? So question number one, where are you headed with all this great stuff? And then the second thing I want you to close out is with now that you have all this experience in film, choreography, even combatives, what does Wing Chun today mean to you or martial arts in general? What do they mean to you today? versus when you first started? Oh, gosh. That's, uh... <clears throat> um, so, I, I really, 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 my, I want to inspire people through my martial arts in acting. I want, I want to inspire I just, I, my goal as a person from a very young age, as a child, I would watch martial art movies and they would give me hope. And my goal as an adult, I want to inspire so many people to pursue their own goals and their own passions, whether it is martial arts or, you know, whatever their dream is. As a martial artist, you know, I, I hope that I could be recognized as a, a female martial artist and film and and inspire people through that. And um, that that is one of my big goals. Uh, what was the second part to your question? Second part is I want to know what does it, it could be Wing Chun, it could be martial arts across the board. What does it mean today now that you're trained? You're experienced in the reality of it, like when you you challenged uh, that challenge match, and then the putting it into a film. What does Wing Chun or martial arts mean to you today, versus what it meant to you day one when you first started? Well, what what is it? What is it uh, benefited you as a person? Do you see it differently? Uh, what are the most standout uh, attributes that have changed you? So when I first started Wing Chun, it was more for survival. I, I, at that point in my life, I really felt like I needed to learn martial arts for survival. Um, and now um, it's just, now 
I, like I have gone through so much as a martial artist in the martial arts, in the martial art community. And, and at this point now in an international martial art community, Wing Chun and so much more that, uh, it, it means the whole world to me because I feel like we as martial artists have the ability to positively impact and influence everyone. And that it just, I mean, it means the world to me and my understanding of Wing Chun and, and the techniques and the philosophy. I mean, from day one to now, 14 years later, I feel like not only have I learned so, so, so much about myself, I've learned so much about people and human behavior. And, and I, I feel like a lot of this also deals with me being an actor because, you know, I, I, I study people for a living and I, I am required to find, um, reasons why people do what they do. And I find that the martial arts has brought so much, the, the I'm going to combine them, the martial arts and acting, they both have brought so much empathy out of me for other people because I, you know, I've witnessed a lot of suffering. I've been through a lot of suffering and I just feel like anyone wanting to improve themselves through martial arts is great. I just, I feel like I just have learned so much. I, I don't know how to possibly like condense it down. You know what I mean? I think it's fantastic. A lot of, re a lot yeah. of things you don't see. We don't see people who dedicate themselves to one art to learn it in totality. You know, people do. Wing you know China. why? No, why? Do you know? I, I feel like maybe I figured it out. Maybe. Well, I'm listening. And, and everyone's different. But Wing Chun, for me, and so many other Wing Chun practitioners have expressed this to me privately. It requires you to do a lot of internal self-reflection. And as human beings, it's extremely difficult emotionally, mentally, physically, because when we're growing, that requires us to let go of that which no longer serves us. And as we're growing, when we're letting go of things that no longer serve us, it can feel like parts of us are dying physically. Like there can actually be a physical um, uh, sensation and feeling and emotion coming from us. And, and I've, I've seen that a lot of people and myself included, it's, it's extremely difficult to constantly see what's wrong with you. What do you need to let go of? What do you need to improve? How can you get better in order to get better? You have to let go of this in order to let go of this. You have to forgive yourself or someone else for doing that and, and, and developing that emotional maturity to forgive people for whether they're horrible things or things that seem petty. It's all in shedding the old and bringing in the new. And it's extremely difficult. You reach a level, I, you reach a level that surpasses physical. And I'll explain, you just defined one of my number one problems with the forum. What you came to is after you've broken through the physical barrier of understanding Wing Chun, right? And this is why I don't argue with people anymore about stuff. I put up my opinion, I'll critique stuff, but I don't critique people on the most part on the littlest levels. Meaning, you agree that, and for those who are not in Wing Chun, the Tan Sao, you know, you're in a position, your elbow is down, your 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 thumb is alongside your your open palm and your fingers are together. And that's... That's the physical position of it. Do you agree that it with a Tan Sao is done, uh, is, is, is put out there an application to attack that could, could, could a Tan Sao be done 
with the elbow flared out to the side and the fingers spread open or even the fingers held in the fist, could Tansau energy be done that way? You mean like here? Yeah, so yeah, see how your elbow's out to the side that way? Yeah, and then open, put your... I mean, sure, if you you caught something from the side and then absorbed it and pulled it back into you, why not? That's my. That's where I'm going with that. When you if learn, you, if you caught it with like a bomb style, or like, oh, you're you're caught off guard, and then you pull it and you absorb, like you, like Tan Sao can come out, Tan Sao can come in, absorbing energy, Tan Sao. You know, it's the whole movement, the whole. That's it. The whole thing, the whole thing. But that that said, um, you can definitely play it different ways. And the better you get in understanding your structure and positioning your body, like the strongest way it, it is like aligning that with your structure. Like it, it all lines down to your heels. You know? So you but, have to, there's where I'm going with that. You, not me, you have to uh-huh. feel, you have to feel that in your body to find out how structure perfectly works for you. Correct. Um, you're you're the one right. who has to do the work. You're the one who has to take the energy. You have to figure out in your body how your structure, your skeletal structure, your muscle, your ligaments. Oh, yeah. Okay, so there you go, right there. And, and, I have and no how position my body. Right, I have yeah. no right. I have zero right to look at your physiology and tell you you're wrong. I have no, unless you are, unless you're doing something overtly exaggerated, I have no right to tell you that because you've done the physical work to determine what it means to you to let go of everything and make it apply. Most martial artists, especially the ones in the forums, have not reached that level yet because if they reach that level, they would continue on to have the mentality you have, which is now all of a sudden you're forgiving you're growing, you're expanding beyond physical. You're now taking the Wing Chun principles and concepts and applying them to life. That's where most people do not get. They're stuck on the mechanics and the physicality. That's why it's impressive. Anybody who says I've been doing Wing Chun X amount of years, you, you, just, you just nailed it. Most people don't want to dedicate themselves to understanding, hey, I don't know how to tell you this, if you stand in your Yiji Kim Young Ma stance for the entire class and you do chain punches for the entire class, you're going to be bored, but I guarantee you, you're going to discover the concepts of Wing Chun. And I can't explain how it happens. They translate from physical into life application. People don't want to do that. They do not want to take the time to do that. You just, you just, you, you gave me an answer that I, wasn't like it, I wasn't expecting. I was expecting you to talk about uh, uh, the the physical side of it, but you just nailed the number of the biggest side where people they screw up in Wing Chun and why they leave it. They can't. It's you're you're, you're holding a mirror up to your face a hundred percent, and that's why I think Wing Chun is is a is a system in totality. Um, I could talk to you all day, but um, good. Yeah, yeah. One one more thing. Yeah, and, like we're all at different levels of learning and progression. We all are, you know. So. Um, how one person may learn one thing will vary on another. But yeah, I, I really enjoyed talking to you. Yes, and we'll have you back on for part two. Uh, let Guys, let's go sponsor this. Uh, the Kickstarter project, um, Aramis, the beginning of five days. Let's do some damage to this. I know in the Wing Chun community, there's everybody. You donate a friggin' buck. You donate five. We're going to get this thing uh, off the ground here. Uh, Lydia, I cannot thank you enough for your time. This was a great conversation. Um, you got a great ambassador for the art, and I hope that your movies and your work spread and they continue to spread our beloved Wing Chun and martial arts in general. Guys, if you like this, share it. Put it out there. Hope you're enjoying these uh, conversations on them's fighting words. And uh, as always, we'll see you on the next episode.